Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience and listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters Business, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. And if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com and click on Be a Guest to Apply. All right. So I have Philip Naples on the line. He's founder and CEO over at Layer. Philip, welcome to the show. Hey, Adam. Thanks for having us. All right, so uh, let's just call this a disruption episode right off the bat. I'm excited to get into what you're doing uh, over at Layer and some of the advances that you're making and what I would argue may have been a little bit of a stagnant industry in insurance and you're, you're changing user experience. You're making it easy on business owners. I mean, I'm excited to bring this to my audience. Uh, but before we get into the product and we go further into the company, maybe just give us a little bit of context. Like, how did you get started on this, on this path as an entrepreneur? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, I've been in the insurance industry for about two decades. Um, what really drove me to uh, form Layer and, and become an entrepreneur is I got a little disenchanted with the industry, primarily around the policies and procedures and processes. Um, as a broker, we have to do 70 plus percent of the work before we know if we're actually going to get a new client. And there's just a lot of inefficiencies there. And then from our customer perspective, small business owners, um, most business owners just don't have a, a deep understanding and don't get the transparency of, of what insurance is actually designed to do for them particularly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just saw kind of a, you know, a, a war between how this thing was going to, to actually work. And then there's tons and tons of uh, articles and reports showing that small businesses were going to continue to rapidly increase, yeah. whereas upper middle market to global businesses would continue to consolidate. So given that small businesses already the backbone of our economy, um, and it's becoming even a more important part of our economy, I looked at this and like, there's got to be a way where we can deliver a stellar customer experience while also being able to be profitable at distributing these products. I love it. And th- that those are my favorite stories is when somebody sees a need in a market, maybe they're very specialized like you are, um, and you're, they're very specialized and they like, you know, there's some opportunity here and there, there's, some, there's something to this. And maybe, mm-hmm. maybe I'm the person to go out there and change things. So I do have to ask you, so, you know, there's a lot of people watching this right now that are, that are in, the, in that space. Maybe they're um, not necessarily in insurance, but they're highly specialized in whatever their field is. And they have an idea, they have mm-hmm something they want to do um what kind of advice would you give someone just to like taking that step because you you know you took that leap of faith and you took that step to go out there at launch layer which i mean that's that's a whole nother story in itself but what kind of yeah. advice would you give to somebody that's maybe considering something i mean i think you just have to take that first step mm-hmm. um anytime you're going to start something or change something you can see where you want to be compared to where you are today. And that could be a very, very monumental undertaking. Um, But break it down into little baby steps, Um, crawl, walk, walk, run. Like they say, you just, the the best way to get started is really just to get started. Just try Mm -hmm. something and then keep progressing on it and keep trying to move forward. Um, I will say, the best thing you can do while you're continuing to move forward is find a reason as fast as possible why you shouldn't. Hmm. And until you, until you find that reason, you should keep going forward. Man, that's a great, that's great advice. So find, find a reason why you shouldn't as fast as possible. (laughs) If if something's not smacking you in the face, they keep going, right? Another foot forward, right? Absolutely. 
That's awesome. Uh, so Philip, that being said, um, like you're, so now, I mean, full tech company that you're running, essentially AI, NLP, you're, you're really um, aiming to disrupt this insurance space. And do you, so do you have that tech background, that technology background <laughs> that like, had you take that leap? I mean, like, how'd, how'd you pull that off? Yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm the insurance guy. I just saw the issue. Um, but I've, I, I love technology. I love gadgets. I love, I love tinkering with things. Honestly, the way I built this, the first version of layer was I put up a, a web form on the website that I'll put it into a Google sheet where I have my first rudimentary rater. Okay. Um, so again, baby steps mm-hmm. and then, you know, push that live one month. And then by the end of the month, we had 10 paying customers. So I had some proof points where I could go find the people uh, who could actually fill the gaps that I have. And I have a lot of gaps. So fortunately, I have a fantastic team to, to fill all those. Oh, man, I love it. And I had to bring that up because there's some people out there that are like, you know, well, I don't have the tech background or I can't do this or whatever. And it's like it's problems. It's just it's figuring out what to do. It's figuring out how to get other people involved that can complement, like you mentioned, things that maybe you have your gaps and and just going and going and doing it. So mm-hmm. I love this. Um, so let's go further into um, let's set the stage, I, I should say, for the for the product overall. So first off, tell us a little bit more about layer and then and then we'll go deeper into the product and the office. Offering. Yeah. So at a high layer or high level layer is an artificial intelligence powered insurance broker. And we're working with small businesses across the U.S., helping them secure, pay for and manage the commercial property and casualty insurance that they need to have to be successful. So think of general liability, workers comp, cyber liability, professional liability, all the things that a business owner may need. Uh, to run their business, both from a legal perspective, regulatory perspective, and contractual perspective. Um, the way we go about doing it is a quick two-step process. Um, it feels like a single experience, but it, it starts with technology we've created that automates the intelligence of the insurance broker mm-hmm. so that we can provide a highly tailored policy recommendation or policies recommendations to the customer. Um, The very next step, and this happens like a split second later, is technology we've created that can predict insurance company pricing and appetite. And what appetite means is what will that what will what types of risks and industries will the potential insurance company accept as an insured? So we can do all this in a single experience that takes about 10 to 12 minutes so that our customers very quickly know exactly what it is they need, why they need it, and what it's going to cost them. Um, The traditional method provides that same sort of understanding, but can take weeks, if not months. Mm -hmm. Um, We know that business owners have a lot on their plate, so we're gonna deliver that information to them as fast as possible. Um, But that's what the technology does, and it will match the customer with the appropriate insurance company product. Um, and they can get back to doing what's really important, which is growing their business. That's awesome. And so uh, a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, executive watching this right now, uh, what is the target market? Is this for um, like middle market, larger businesses? Is this for like all the way down to sole proprietor? I mean, or, or LLC? I mean, give us a, f- a flavor for who this type of, uh, who, who layer could be appropriate for. Great, great question. So we're working with organizations that are sole props, uh, sole proprietors, so single individual um, operating under their social security number, all the way up to uh, corporations or LLCs. But wow. really where we say that we typically support the best is those organizations spending you know, as little as $50 a month in premium mm. and as much as you know $5,000 a month in premium. If you look at that and compare that to the types of businesses uh, that exist in the U.S., mm-hmm. there's about 30 million businesses that fall in that that range. Wow! So you can be again a single employee. You could have up to 100 employees. You have no revenue. You could probably be up to 50 million dollars in revenue. Mm-hmm. But it's for these. It's for the business owner that's looking for the technology tool set to give them the understanding, transparency, and um, affordability when purchasing, when buying and purchasing their insurance products. 
So I want to go, let's go a little bit further into the technology and how this works, because I think what one of the really unique things I want to make a distinction here is that it's not, a, you're, you're doing the complete opposite of what this may sound like at first for some that don't know the technology behind it. That's why I want to go into a meeting. This isn't a one size fits all proposition. These are unique policy recommendations and they're, they're custom tailored to the business. So mm -hmm. how are you pulling that off? Because I want to make that distinction real clear for everybody watching? Yeah, so two, two forms of technology that we're leveraging. First is artificial intelligence. That's how we really um, emulate or automate the intelligence of the insurance broker. Um, the second piece is called natural, natural language processing. So one thing to keep in mind about insurance products, they are not commodities. They are not written the same. While there may be some similar structure, ultimately the content and coverage intent in each policy is completely different. Mm -hmm. um, so we use these two technologies to first understand what is the optimal policy form for the customer. And then the technology around the artificial intelligence is, is sharing with the customer exactly why they need to purchase this type of coverage. Mm. So a great insurance broker understands the intent of the policies that they are providing to their customers and they're effectively consulting with the customer doing a risk identification and risk management solution with the insurance policies. Mm -hmm. um, much like any other consultant in the world, that's very, very expensive. And the reason it doesn't exist um, or the reason the small business owners are neglected from that type of consulting mm -hmm. arrangement is because the premium dollars that are generated in the small business sector yeah. simply can't support the broker's time. So we're utilizing the cutting edge technology to automate that process and deliver the, still the optimal customer experience and customer coverage solution. And now, so the recommendations, now we, we've used the word um, brokerage multiple times here. So mm -hmm. maybe make the distinction between um, a brokerage versus maybe like captive or a different type of uh, insurance model, just so people understand mm -hmm. that uh, as this evolves uh, and, and we may even throw in machine learning in some of the way that this, that the technology is learning, but as this mm -hmm. evolves and insurance evolves, like insurance isn't a static product. So it's changing. So as all of this evolves, um, the, the, the platform and the recommendations and the other things should in turn evolve as they learn and as they get better too. Am I, am I wrong on that, by the way? Like, give me a little no, bit of context you're, on that. You're, you're, you're correct. So the insurance policies themselves stay um, fairly static mm -hmm. throughout the policy year and beyond, mainly because they're all heavily regulated and to make significant yeah. changes require um, regulatory approval in each state. But what does, what is dynamic is the exposures of the particular business owner. Mm -hmm. So small businesses can be generating, you know, revenues around a million dollars today. Yeah. And in two months have that grand slam contract that makes them a $5 million business. Yeah. That's an entirely different risk profile. And the current insurance program that they have in place today may not address what they are doing in two months. So the technology is continuously evaluating that. So in the event that we do notice that this customer has rapid growth in something, whether exposure or payroll or property values, it'll provide to them how their insurance policies should be adjusted. And we can do that mid policy term. Um, an insurance broker, to answer your earlier question, is a independent party that it has a fiduciary responsibility to the to the business owner buying the insurance mm -hmm. and can and help them buy the policies from the respective insurance companies. For larger organizations, these insurance brokers have the ability to stay in consistent communication with the business to see how things are changing. Again, because the profit margins are right. uh, support that. Um, in the smaller business sector, that typically doesn't happen unless the customer reaches out proactively, which is going to be difficult because they have a million other things to do. Yes. Or when the policy comes up for renewal, which ultimately may be too late. Mm -hmm. So we're utilizing technology so that we can predict these changes and in inflection points in the small business owners and say, um, for example, customers like you after six months of being in business in this particular industry and state see a growth in their revenue by 35 percent and if so this is how the insurance your insurance policy should be adjusted is this something that has occurred and if so is this something you is this a change you'd like to make to your insurance policies hmm. so it's 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 providing the exact same service but bringing it down to the 30 million small businesses in an automated fashion that provides them with 
definitive information so they can make a decision and again, get back to work. It's great. It's, it's almost like the technology is really just uh, it's, is democratizing the information because you, like you mentioned, if somebody, if you're, you know, sure, if you have a huge company and, you know, and you're, you're talking to your insurance person often because you have, you know, a huge amount, you know, revenue, other things coming in, great. And that does make sense. But if you're paying, you know, on those lower ends of premium, just because, you know, your smaller business getting started out or whatever your, your situation is, like, it's just not, it's not feasible. Like, and mm -hmm. if you're in that situation too, you're just, you're, in my opinion, less likely to be proactive on your insurance. Cause that's more just a box you have to check off. Um, it's a smaller expense for you also as a small business owner. And you're thinking about those bigger expenses going out also. Sure. So you might have, so it's not just the, I don't want to, I'm not uh, picking on the insurance agent. I think it's both sides. Like it's a relationship on both sides. So what your technology and what layer is doing is it's just, it's just making for a better experience overall. Absolutely. hundred percent. So let's, um, speaking of experience, like take me through. So I, so I, I'm, I'm a business owner and I'm saying, all right, Philip, uh, I, you know what, I, I like the idea of layer. I, I've been thinking about maybe changing some of my current policies, or maybe I need to pick up another coverage. Like what does my user experience look like? Yeah. So a great question. So once they, uh, find our onboarding portal, whether directly through layer or through one of our, our partner brokers, mm -hmm. um, they're going through a very, um, uh, an application process that is written and, and, um, a very common English way that is not confusing. Um, so they'll go through this process. It takes about 12 minutes. It's conditional, uh, so that they're not being asked questions that aren't relevant to their to their organization. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end of the process, it's a five-step process. Um, they're presented with all the insurance policies that we would suggest that they purchase. Now they can click on these policies and they'll show up in their policy wallet, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll have all the terms and conditions within underneath each respective insurance program that we're suggesting based upon their particular, particular industry and stage. And then at the exact same time, the predictive technology is running so they can see what their price is. Mm -hmm. Now we, we show their pricing monthly, mainly because small business owners cash flow out, you know, 30 days, mm -hmm. sometimes 60 days at best, but presenting them with a annual policy um, is challenging. And it's mainly because their cash flow doesn't necessarily allow them to pay the full annual premium at once. Yeah. We also allow them to pay monthly with a credit card. So again, we're doing everything we possibly can to make these annual policies as affordable as possible to the customer. Mm -hmm. um, but they can pick and choose and customize that proposal um, however they see fit, because even though our, our recommendations are very, very accurate, mm -hmm. they may have a contract that falls outside the scope of what is uh, typically normal. Mm -hmm. And so as they make these changes, they'll see their premium, their monthly premium go up or down. And when they're ready to go, they simply say, yeah, I want that. Um, agree to the terms and conditions and put in their payment information, then they are done. Technology will then um, take back over and then intelligently match each product line of cover mm -hmm. with the appropriate insurance company product. Um, and many of our clients, if not most, have multiple insurance companies represented in their portfolio of cover. Um, the more traditional way is to try to package it with a single carrier because it creates efficiencies for the broker. Uh, but not necessarily providing the optimal coverage solution for the customer. So again, we are delivering the experience that a Fortune 500 company would have when purchasing their insurance down to the solopreneur working out of their home. And you mentioned uh, you mentioned the wallet. Uh, so what is the insurance wallet? Just uh, I don't want to glance over that. Just so yeah. we can feel for the for the experience overall. Yeah, the insurance wallet is a. Uh, it is a, a part of the portal where they can get all the, all the high level specifics about each and every policy that they purchase. So think of policy type, policy number, limits of coverage, deductibles, um, any endorsements that may have been added to it. Yeah. Um, and it also serves as a place where they can download the actual policy wording. Mm -hmm. um, and that policy wallet actually drives much uh, several other functionalities within the platform because it's all put into a database, which mm -hmm. um, the technology leverages to produce additional insurance documentation that the customer will likely need throughout the policy year. 
And let's say that I'm going through that, you know, that 12 minute experience of entering the, the very simple, you know, answering the very simple conditional questions. So you're not just collecting data for the sake of collecting it. You're collecting what you need to do your job um, mm -hmm. in, in, in delivering the, the, um, the correct policy recommendations, which I'm a big fan of that because I feel like some things I've filled out in the past, people are collecting just to collect data. I'm like, what yep. does this matter? So I yep. love that you mentioned it's conditional. I just wanted to bring that back up so everybody recognize mm -hmm. that. But um, let's just say that I'm going through it and for whatever reason, I have a question um, sure. and I'm or I'm stuck on something just because I just I'm just stuck. What, what do I do then? Yeah. So we built the company with the notion that human contact is optional. We're going to let the customer decide if they want to speak to us directly. Mm -hmm. um, so they can pick up the phone and call us. They can schedule time with us. There is the capability to uh, text us in real time uh, or chat with us in real time on the actual uh, website. So just a little bink, beacon in the lower right hand corner. If you're halfway through and you have a question, open it up, ask the question. Our customer success team can literally pull up exactly where you are. Mm -hmm. um, they can see your experience that you're seeing and they can also see what's being put into our database and help guide you through the process. Now, are they now like, so when I, when I do that, am I talking to somebody that's licensed? Are they mm -hmm. knowledgeable in insurance? I mean, I just give me a feel for that. Is this just a, uh, and I don't, I shouldn't say, um, is this a non-licensed individual? I mean, give us a little bit of feel for that. Uh, they are licensed insurance agents uh, for two reasons. One, uh, by law, you have to be, if you're going to mm -hmm. communicate, if you're going to consult on insurance, but two, um, being a licensed insurance agent, as well as a training that goes along with it and the supplemental training that we provide allows them to have the experience to provide that definitive information around what insurance policies they need or how to uh, properly uh, complete the application. Um, all of our agents are uh, based in the US, so they're all English speaking as a first language. We are expanding um, both um, into certain states uh, more rapidly and uh, industries that have uh, others, uh, other languages that are not English and we're actively looking for people with who are bilingual in various languages that can help us provide that same stellar experience to to all organizations. Oh, this is great. So the so um, the, so the business owner number one, you're getting a really seamless uh, a seamless user experience. Twelve minutes or so to fill out the conditional questions, to go through the process, to see what the what the documents are that are or the insurance policies that are recommended for you. You have the ability to number one, you get to talk to somebody if you need to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, you can go right through. You're working with the brokerage, so you're not just uh, you know you're not working where you're going to get the same set of products that every everybody gets because that's what you're supposed to sell because that's the company you work for. Yep. So you're um, and the, the, the actual, um, so the technology behind it is allowing you to, um, is allow is keeping up with your current situation. So if you have, like you mentioned, that banner year or that banner month where you land that big contract and now your coverages aren't right, you're getting that attention and you're made mm -hmm. aware. You have your portal. I mean, I mean, what's next, Philip? You got a lot of bases covered here. What's next for Layer? Yeah, that's, uh, so so we're in the process of actively deploying our technology to small businesses through their current insurance agent. So you mentioned earlier that layers of disruptor in, in the industry. I guess to a certain degree we are, but honestly, we see ourselves more as an enabler mm. because we're actually enabling the agents and brokers who are working with the 30 million small businesses mm -hmm. to one, deliver that optimal customer experience that business yeah. owners are demanding today. And then it also creates um, pretty significant profit lifts to their book of to their book of business that they're managing. So we're actively, you know, exploring and deploying opportunities with large top ten brokers, uh, small regional brokers, but any any insurance agent or broker that sees small business and sees the same opportunity I did several years ago, mm -hmm. we're going to enable them to go after it with our technology in a fully white labeled environment. So. Mm. The customer will not know they're working with layer unless they really get into the deep terms and conditions, mm -hmm. but we will answer the phone. We will respond. All of our emails are branded as our broker partner or agent partner um, because we want, we want to enable access to the insurance market from, for these small business owners that will only provide our industry with more information that we need so that we can provide more innovative products at, at more competitive pricing. Mm -hmm. Um, so by us being hundred percent laser focused on what's important for the business owner, 
it is unlocking value never seen before for insurance brokers as well as insurance companies. And so you mentioned uh, briefly, but I, uh, but I know there's some watching. So I do want to go further down that path. Like what, what's, what are typically, what's typically a good fit to work with layer? Like what have you found? I mean, you've been doing this for a while now. What have you found is usually a good relationship or a good fit um, in terms of broker to be working with layer? Uh, so brokers, um, every single broker has a book of small business that is traditionally unprofitable. So if they are looking for a, a true turnkey solution to flip that profit margin and, and make it a, a, um, the profit leader, mm -hmm. they should work with us. Um, if you're an organization or a broker that is seeing the same trends that I have seen that, you know, small business is really going to be the future and we need to find a more efficient way to distribute to them, you should work with layer. Or if you're a broker that works with, uh, a large set of very similar companies. So called, it's called a program business, but think of a franchise type business. You're working with several similar franchises. You should work with Layer because we can not only service that, but we can onboard it for you very, very quickly and effectively. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. So you're saving, you're saving, you're saving them time. You're increasing profit margin on maybe some part of their book that wasn't quite as profitable and might have even taken more of their time um, to, to manage. Uh, and then you also mentioned it's a white labeled solution. So tell, tell me a little bit more about like what that looks like. Yeah. So um, when we sign up a insurance broker partner or insurance company partner, uh, the, the experience that their clients go into mm -hmm. Uh, it looks just like that broker's branding. It has all those same logos and branding and color scheme. Um, the tone of the, the way we communicate is in that broker's tone. Mm -hmm. And then if they pick up the phone and call our call center, we pick up the phone as the broker. So again, wow. this is helping the broker deploy their brand out into the community um, and then deliver that digital experience. Um, that's just really, really challenging to 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 build on your own. Yeah, I, I, well, well said. Uh, well, Philip, I have to tell you, it has been a pleasure having you on the show and uh, and in what you're doing in insure tech as a, as I shouldn't say a disruptor as an enabler. I like your I like your uh, your your term better than mine because that is what you're doing. You're enabling the ability for small business owners and business owners to get the right insurance coverage they want, and then you're also enabling the brokers to to service their clients better and to fill some maybe gaps that they may mm -hmm. have in a really turnkey solution. So I think it's great what you're doing, um, definitely in the industry. That being said. If somebody is watching this and they want to learn more about Layer, whether they're on the broker side or whether they're on the, they're looking at policies, they're a business owner and they're like, hey, this, this makes sense. I want to, I want to give it a try. Um, what's the best way for people to follow up? Best way to follow up is go to our website. It's at www.withlayer, that's W-I-T-H-L-A-Y-R.com. Um, if you're an individual uh, or a company looking for coverage, you can simply start the proposal or you can schedule some time with one of our customer success advocates. And if you're an insurance agent, broker, insurance company, or some other organization that has an interest in deploying insurance products to your, to your clients, there's a section under partnerships that allows you to schedule some time with our head of partnerships and explore that opportunity. Fantastic. Well, Philip, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your background and all the great work that you're doing over at Layer. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you learned some things. If you did, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. Definitely want you to be a return viewer, have more great guests like Philip coming up and don't want you to miss those. And Philip, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.